Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 10 for chapter 2. In this video, we will talk about um, the existence and uniqueness theorem for nonlinear equations. As you will see, this is very different from the linear equations. So here is the theorem. So here we are considering differentiable functions as solution for the following nonlinear equation. That is y prime equals a function of t and y, f of t and y, and the initial condition is given at t bar. Here is the assumption that is the function f of ty and the partial derivative partial f partial y of t and y, they are both continuous and bounded on a rectangle. Let's say the rectangle in the ty plane will be t between alpha and beta and y between a and b. And this rectangle must contain the initial data that is t bar y bar. Okay, so that's the assumption. Under this assumption, we now have the following conclusion. We conclude that there exists an open interval around t bar so that this t bar is in that interval. t bar is where the initial condition is given. And that this open interval is contained in the interval alpha beta, where this uh, rectangle box you had earlier. And then on that interval, that contains t bar but is contained in alpha and beta, we have the solution which exists and is unique. We can see from the wording of this theorem that the statement here is much more restrictive. We have assumptions and uh, we have conclusions very restricted. So in particular, it tells you that there exists an interval around t contained in alpha beta, but it doesn't tell you um, how big that interval might be. It might be very small, but there exists one. So this is kind of a local statement. And reflecting back to our corresponding existence and uniqueness theorem for the linear equation, we notice that that one is much stronger. The proof for this theorem for the nonlinear equation uses um, a technique called um, the Picard iteration, which is uh, quite complicated. And uh, we will not cover it in this video. Now let's make some remarks. So first, recall the assumption f and the partial derivative of f with respect to y, they are continuous. Let's say they're continuous at some point, t naught, y naught. Then we know that in a small neighborhood around that point, we can linearize this function f we can write f of ty to be a plus by, okay? And that would be a very good approximation in a very small neighborhood. And then by the theory for the linear equation, um, the nonlinear equation more or less behave in the same way as the linear one. And then we can conclude that the solution exists and is uh, unique. Okay, and then using the argument that the solution of the nonlinear equation is really well approximated by that of the linearized one, and then we can conclude that 
that solution exists and also unique. I would uh, like to comment that such a technique is rather standard for nonlinear problem. So instead of treating the whole nonlinear problem, we study the local linearized problem and develop theorem for the linearized problem. And that can be applied locally to the nonlinear problem. Remark two. So we will now have a, a rough argument. I want to stress that this is not a rigorous one. It's not a complete proof, but it's kind of argument to help us understand how the bound we put here on the partial derivative would help us establishing the uniqueness. Okay, so we want to show uniqueness, then let's assume that there are two solutions, y1 and y2. Since they both are solutions, they both satisfy the equation, and then I can subtract the two equations and then have the equation for the difference. y1 minus y2 prime will be the y1 prime minus y2 prime, which is the function f at y1 and the function f at y2. And also the initial condition for the difference now is zero. And now since the left-hand side is a complete derivative, I can integrate both equation and also using the um, initial condition that at t bar it's zero, then this quantity will be the integral from t bar to t and uh, I integrate this one. Since I use the t as the variable, therefore I change the variable of the integration into s. So wherever I had t now is changed into s, and that's my integral. Now note that the integral of this integral here is the function f. f is a function of two variables, t and y. Here t is changed into s. And look at these two f, we see that the first variable is evaluated at the same value s, while the second one is at the different point y1 and y2. So here comes in the bound on the partial derivative. If we have a bound on the partial derivative, that means f does not change that much in y. Okay, if you fix the first um, in variable and vary the second one, the change in the value of f is bounded. So we can say that there exists a constant, capital M, does not depend on um, y1 and y2, such that the difference between the function at these two points is bounded by the constant times the difference between y1 and y2. Okay, now um, let's take this equation and we take absolute value sign on both sides. So the absolute value of y1 minus y2 will be the absolute value of this integral. Then we can move the absolute value inside the integral and this gives us something bigger. So we have a less than equal sign. Okay, so that I will be taking the absolute value of the integral. And now we use this estimate we just wrote there and replace this one by some quantity that is bigger. And uh, since m is a constant, we pull it outside the integral. And that's what we have here. Okay, so let's uh, um, repeat the calculation of the last line in the previous slide. Basically, we have shown that the distance um, between y1 and y2 at time t is bounded by a constant times the integral from the initial t bar to a later time t, the distance between y1 and y2. Okay, so um, since y1 minus y2 is occurring, to simplify the notation, 
let's call this to be e of t, the absolute value of the distance. And we know that this is a um, non-negative quantity, bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, and then this inequality can be written as e of t is less than or equal to m times the integral of uh, e of s ds. Sorry, that has to be an s. And with the initial condition given at t bar to be zero. Now let me introduce a comparison argument. Let's now define a quantity w of t such that it satisfies the following equation. Basically, it's this inequality here, but I take it to be the equal sign. Okay, so wt equals that. So again, this should be s. I will fix that in the slides. And uh, with the same initial condition. So we see that um, by our construction, we know that w and e are the same initially. And then um, w equals the integral of w with an equal sign, and et is with a less than or equal sign. So by comparison, we conclude that et cannot be bigger than wt, so it's less than equal. And finally, um, what is wt? Well, it satisfies this equation. And we can um, differentiate it and easily get that w prime is m times w, where m is the constant. And the initial condition is 0. And we know that the solution for this linear problem is just wt is identically equal to 0. Now, since wt is 0, and we know that et has to be less than or equal to wt, and et is also bigger than or equal to 0, therefore we conclude that et is also identically 0. That means the solution y1 and y2 are identical to each other. Therefore, we conclude the uniqueness of the solution. OK, and that's a um, kind of a rough um, argument kind of a semi-proof for the uniqueness. I want to stress that um, if uh, you don't have existence of solution, then the uniqueness doesn't make any sense. So the uniqueness theorem can only be applied once you have shown that the solution exists. If the solution exists locally on a small interval, then you can say the unique solution is also only on that smart interval. Okay. Finally, as uh, we have been stressing multiple times in this video that for nonlinear problem, the existence and uniqueness theorem is restrictive and it is pretty hard to really use. In our next video, we will um, dive into this problem through a couple of uh, counterexamples to show that for nonlinear problems, you might not have existence, you might not have uniqueness. It's a much more complicated picture. Okay, so that's all I have to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time.